Say you were tasked with teaching someone about the nucleophilic reactivity of the enamine. The way you'd probably do it on paper is you would draw curved arrows to show the enamine acting as a nucleophile and donating electrons. When you drew those curved arrows, you'd probably start at the very first electron source, the nitrogen, draw an arrow down between the nitrogen and carbon, and then draw the double bond as the final ultimate nucleophile that forms a new bond to whatever electrophile is around. On paper, this is easy to do sequentially because you have to draw one arrow before the other, but in a JMOL model, it can be hard to show things sequentially. That's where the value of animations comes in, and in this webcast, I'd like to give you some pointers on animations. Remember that you can create animations using the Active Applet Maker, and all animated JMOLs need to use the Active Applet Maker to create web pages that are then iframed into the wiki. You can test animations, however, using your local copy of JMOL along with a few useful commands. Remember in the Active Applet Maker that every button is going to be assigned a long string of commands, so you can string commands together in the script console locally, see what they do, and realize that that exact sequence is going to take place when a user clicks your button on the web. So let's see if we can emulate the process of drawing curved arrows sequentially on this JML. Well, if we simply lay down two arrows and upload that to the web, that's useful in that we see the curved arrows and see how the electrons flow, but we don't see things along the time dimension. To see the time dimension, we need to apply these commands sequentially and place a delay between the two draw arrow commands. This is easy to do using JMOL's delay command, which takes a single parameter, the length of time in seconds you'd like to delay. Placing delay 1.0 between the two arrow drawings will lead to a delay of one second between the drawing of the two arrows. Notice how this new sequence of commands emulates the process of actually drawing the curved arrows on paper. We can go one step further and ask about the stereochemistry of these particular arrows. Based on the direction that the second arrow is pointing, which face of this enamine is being added to? We can turn the enamine around and notice that the arrow is pointing directly at us. So clearly it's this face of the enamine, the one we're looking down on, that's being added to. This turns out to be the psi face. We can again show this using the Kahn Ingold Prelog priority system, but we'd like to do this sequentially so that we can show the appearance of priorities from highest to lowest in sequence. We can do this using a delay. But before we do that, let's actually rotate the model using the move to command. To determine the coordinates and parameters of our final view, we can type show orientation move to in the JMOL console. This provides a move to command that will lead to the view shown. Let's copy our original command that drew the arrows, add a delay before the move, copy in the move, add yet another delay, and now let's label the three important atoms, one, two, three, in order of decreasing priority. So the nitrogen atom will receive the highest priority. We can label that by selecting nitrogen and labeling it with a one. Let's delay only half a second this time. Select this carbon, which turns out to be atom number one. Delay another half second. And select this hydrogen, which turns out to be atom number six. Now, when we apply this long string of commands, we should see the arrows appear, the model rotate, and the priority numbers appear. 